There you have it, the session ending for Thursday. Let's take a look at how the markets close all three major indices ending in negative territory. The Dow there losing half a percent, down about 148 points. The S&P 500 losing more than 1%, they're down 40 points. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq taking the biggest beating, they're down 1.7%, they're losing 181 points. Well, let's take a closer look at the broader markets with our markets panel. Let's bring in Kevin Flanagan, Wisdom Tree Head of Fixed Income Strategy, and Eric Ditton, the Wealth Alliance President and Managing Director. Welcome to you both. So, Eric, obviously, people have had a bit of time to go through and sort of pass through some of the language that we heard from Jay Powell. What do you think the markets are focusing on the most at the moment? Uh, Jerome Powell wants to be remembered as the Paul Volcker of the new millennium and not the Arthur Burns. And so he has made it clear. He said the path, the path is shortening for the soft landing. He will sacrifice the economy if necessary to tame inflation. Uh, and, and that's what he's going to do. And of course, the risk is over tightening. He recognizes that. And quite frankly, he's OK with it. So if you look at the market and you break it down, it's the top of three markets, right? I mean, just just broadly speaking, the Dow is down 10% year to date, and the S&P is down around 20, and the Nasdaq's down around 30. The more tech, the Eric? more growth you have in the index, the more you're getting hurt because of those rising rates. Yeah, Eric, we're having a little trouble with your audio. We're going to, going to try to uh, fix that right now. But Kevin, I'm going to go to you. Just in terms of the action that we've seen over the last 24 hours, the selling that we're seeing led by some of those larger cap tech names. Anything in this that I guess changes your view of what we could see play out between now and year end? Well, I mean, it goes back to the prior segment, right? I think the markets were kind of grasping for any kind of sign that we would get the PAL pivot. But what we got was more or less pivot light. Yeah, we may go from 75 to 50 basis point rate hikes going forward, from here, but that doesn't mean the Fed's not going to keep raising rates. And I think that was Powell's underlying message, trying to get it through to the markets, that we're probably going to be higher for longer. And that's not something the markets wanted to hear. And Kevin, just to follow up on that, obviously, we've seen this before. We've seen this 75 basis point hike. We've seen it baked in. Markets still continuing to be enthusiastic and then and then very upset afterwards. And we see a lot of selling off. At what point do the markets really take this on and understand the Fed is not changing course anytime soon? That's a great question. I, I think the underlying message, whether it's stocks or in my neck of the woods in the bond market, volatility is just front and center. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So investors, I think, need to be prepared to continue to see this kind of volatile action in the markets, in the indexes, uh, until the Fed probably begins to signal the actual pivot. What is the actual PAL pivot? That's when they start talking about pausing and maybe, maybe a year from now, rate cuts. But we're a long way away from that if you listen to what the chairman's saying. But I, I think what's important to remember is think about where we were a year ago. We were still holding on, or I should say the Fed was, still holding on to transitory. So we've seen how fast things can change. But I think for now, take Powell and company at their word. It is higher for longer. Eric, we just heard Kevin mention a Fed pivot. It's going to be a while there until the Fed actually does pivot. In terms of maybe the Fed scaling back more, more significantly or pausing their rate hikes, when do you see that, I guess, becoming a more realistic uh, option? Well, do you believe in Fed funds futures? I don't know if we should or not. Their track record has not been that great. But nevertheless, it's kind of like the market gauge, the sentiment we have now. So let's just take it for what it's worth. June next year, June 23, Fed funds futures are showing a, a new range, probably between five to five and a quarter. That's at least 100 basis points higher than where we are now. And I think back to that prior segment, before, you know, what Powell was saying with respect to the September dots probably have to be lifted based upon incoming data. So I wouldn't be surprised in December if instead of 4.6 percent, the terminal rate from the Fed is around five. So we have we have at least if you figure they go 50 December 25, 25, you have at least three more rate hikes coming down the pike. Eric, is that on par with what you're expecting? 
Yes, I think that's uh, that's on par. I mean, it, it, you know, one thing the Fed is doing is they're really telegraphing everything. They're trying not to surprise the markets. And I think the big challenge here, I mean, if you look, a lot of the Fed's medicine is working. Uh, oil prices, gas prices have come down, lumber, steel, uh, a lot of a lot of things are moderating. The issue really is the tight labor market. There's two job openings uh, for every one um, employee. And, you know, we've got a demographic shift happening here. We've got baby boomers retiring. We've got people with long COVID. The, and, and we've tightened immigration policies. And the bottom line is that the workforce is shrinking. And I think that's going to be the big challenge is, is figuring out this, this tight labor market. And Eric, on top of that, in your notes, you talk about the combination of the sell-off in stocks, bonds and crypto, making this one of the worst years for wealth destruction ever. Give us some context here. Yeah, I mean, if you just looking at the, the first six months, the, uh, the market uh, had the worst six months uh, opening since 1970. And we actually had the worst first six months in the bond market in history. And uh, the Wall Street Journal professed just recently that the 60-40 allocation has had its worst year annualized in 100 years. Then you add on the crypto, and if you want to start talking about the speculation in meme stocks and in SPACs, um, there has been real damage out there. We're also anecdotally, we're seeing that individuals are trading a lot of short options, options that are on the day of expiration. That is a crapshoot uh, as, as bad as they come. We're seeing, we're seeing single stock ETFs, super high octane. This all points to a huge amount of speculation. That's the hallmark of, of the tops of markets and people are losing a lot of money right now. And, and big tech equals big wreck. Um, the leaders are getting shot right now. They're getting taken out. And quite frankly, the bear market can't end until the leaders come down, and they are. Kevin, where are you seeing the most opportunity in the market today, given the losses that Eric was just talking about and the uncertainty over the next couple of months? Well, great question. So back, like, like I said, to my neck of the woods in, in the bond market, I think what's interesting is that perhaps the worst record of performance that we've seen in the bond market this year, is it setting the stage for a rebound or a good year in 2023 or 2024. That may be where we're going, and I think that's an important aspect to this. If you look at Treasury yields across the curve, you keep seeing highest since 2007. Think about that. That's a generation. That's 15 years ago. There's a lot of investors and advisors that have never really seen interest rates at these levels. So income has come back into fixed income. And I think it's going to be interesting that arguably, as Eric was saying, if the Fed is making this policy mistake, the economy rolls over eventually, and we do begin to see a pause, and then, of course, rate cuts coming down the pike, you know, you are setting the stage for what could be maybe the second half of next year, and as I said, 2024, a good year for the bond market. But still, as of now, what we would say is I'd rather be late than early to the duration party. Kevin Flanagan, Eric Ditton, so great to get your uh, perspective on the recent action that we've been uh, seeing play out in the markets and helping us make sense of everything that's going on. Thanks so much for joining us.